Well, we've done our done our setup of our DRO, and now what I've done, I've just put a paint pen in the, in the chuck, and we're just going to do a quick run around the holes just to make sure we're comfortable with it before we actually commit to drilling. So we'll bring this one across to the side a little bit. Overshot the mark. I get excited, don't I? Okay. X marks the spot. Hole two. You probably can't see that. There's a little dot there. I'll have to rig a way up of getting the getting the light on the other angle somehow. That might be better. Okay, hole two. So hole two. We have to come across to zero here. Point oh five of a millimeter out. Then this one will the Y axis will bring across. <laughs> That's my phone binging away. Bloody thing bings all day. Okay, there's hole number two. So we'll just run him down. Put the cap on. Hole three. I'll stop filming this now. I'll do a run around and I'll come back once we've got all the marks on there. You can see the general idea of what we're up to and we'll measure measure with our verniers across the studs over the other side there and we'll measure our centres and just check just to check we're okay before we um, actually committing to drill the holes and then when we drill the holes we'll know we can do it with confidence so I'll be back shortly well there you go there's our our 12 holes and now just do a couple of checks that we sort of think we're pretty good It's good. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 holes. We seem to have the diameter that we want. So that's a great thing. So anyway, we'll, um, we'll set up now. And we'll, I might um, just start drilling, I think. There's 716 studs. I'm going to do a half inch hole. But um, we'll just drop a little pile of hole through first. Just as a um, way to go. Give the, give the drill a bit of an easier time of it. Well, we've got the drill all set up and we've got a drill in it just as a pilot hole, so we're just going to take it steady and pop a few holes in. I might lock the dovetail at the back. That way it can't move on us and we'll make it as rigid as we possibly can. I thought the drill looked like it was bent there for a bit, but it was just a bit of magic cutting from there. I've had a change of plans. I thought instead of um, instead of doing all the pilot holes and all the main ones, um, it would just be easier to pop the drills in and out and go that way. So we'll have a go at that and see how we go.
That's the drill we sharpened in the drill doctor the other day. I'll take this handle out for you. those little sharp bits flying in there. Right, that's just lovely. Alright, no need to watch me do all the rest. Like I say, just repeat. <laughs> Go back and forth a few times. Twelve times you'll have to do it. And you'll see me drill each hole separately. Yeah, so. Alright, we'll continue on. We'll come back when we've got them done. And we'll do a bit of a test fit on the axle over there. Well, I thought I'd better show you this too, just so you thought I wasn't a rough bastard. I'm, I'm just doing the tidying the holes up. Short and sweet, but it's made it look okay. Well, here we are, the last hole. I've got drill swath everywhere. <laughs> It's all over the floor, all in the middle. But anyway, we'll just run this last hole through. sharpened at all since um, starting the job. It's been doing well. That's one we did on the drill doctor last weekend. So we'll just get our, get the drill out. Pop our deburrer in. Bring it all down. Further so the lead is not in the way. Right, so that's the plate done. The next thing is give it a bit of a tidy up. Oh, I'm dropping stuff again. Too much junk on the table just at the moment, I need to have a clean up. So that's it for the moment, we'll, we'll get this off, that's the light you can see. <laughs> the, um, we'll get this off, we'll deburr the back of it 
and then we'll set it over on the axle and just make sure it's right to do the job. What we're going to do on the back here is just slide it around on the bed and just do a little bit of deburring. Do that little exercise. Well, here we are over on the bench. This is our axle. That's the axle with the six studs. That sits over there nicely. So, what we can do now is pick up these six nuts and hopefully we can get a full nut on each one. That one doesn't feel like it wants to go on just at the moment. But it looks like we'll have just enough room to get a full nut. This stud looks like it's in a bit deeper than the others. Well, there might be a little bit of junk there because I, I still haven't cleaned that housing up. So here's the plate in the press. And that's how it works. You, you bolt it in there nice and low. Then you press the axle down through the tapered roller bearing and in the past I've had one of these slide sideways and it, it wasn't a good thing it, um, we're lucky someone didn't get damaged doing it so this this piece of um, bar stock there that's a bit of three inch we're going to make a collar that sits over the press here and pushes on this surface here but then on the axle there's a little tip there that tip there, and that's where the other axle, they rub on that, so you don't want to distort that too much. So the plan is to use this to make a, a guide so that um, when we press down here, it comes down over the axle and holds it true, but we're not pressing on that point there, we're pressing on this flat surface here. So we'll get the bit of stock chucked up into the lathe and we'll work on doing that this morning we'll just make something like that and and yeah have it here I, I may even i've been thinking i may even drill this and tap it and so when i put an adapter this adapter or perhaps later on i'd like to make another adapter yeah for different jobs um i can just put a little hole in the side in the in the side of the piece and um, with a bolt or a wing nut and that'll stop if the axle drops down here we we'll have to put a bit of wood underneath. When the axle drops down through the bearing, well, the adapter will stay with the press and it won't become something to fall on your toes. So, so we'll get the piece of steel over, the, the bit of bar stock over in the lathe and yeah, we'll, um, we'll start making something to, to do that intermediate job the, between the ram and the axle. We've just tidied up the outside of the shaft here. It had a bit of rubbish on it, um, and, uh, and, a, and a couple of um, rust pits on it, so we just uh, had to get a nice surface. So we'll drill this, we'll put a centre up here and we'll drill it, and we'll do the measurement, and this end will start with the end that goes on the ram on the hydraulic press there so um, we'll just find ourselves a centre which I should be able to do here and the carriage up a bit
slow that down a little bit. That's pretty close where we need to be. We'll bring that up touching to one inch. And when we get to two and a quarter, well, we'll know it's time to stop. Somewhere near inch and a quarter deep. We'll take a measurement. Yep, by the time we tidy that up, that'll be good.
machine. Now, this end here, that goes up onto the press. So where the press cylinder goes, the cylinder goes in here. Then this end here, that goes over the axle and the hole in the centre is so that little tip on the axle can go up in this hole here and not be damaged. We're actually pushing on the best part of the axle to push on um, without distorting the, the rubbing tip. So we'll go back over to the press and I'll just show you how it all sits in. Right, that's the axle. That's the axle sitting in the press. That's with the plate. It needs a couple of screws, nuts on there yet, but that's okay. And so all we need to do is bring this over a little bit in line. Now what we'll do here is so we can lift the press up and down um, without this coming off, having to have a second hand, we'll drill through here into the adapter on the cylinder. We'll drill through there. We'll probably put a 5 16 bolt or thread in the ram, but we'll do a 3 8 hole here so we're not pushing actually on the thread. It's just to stop it dropping away on us. Well, it's on the front of the ram here, doesn't matter where the hole is, as long as we got pressure on it. So it's sitting up and we'll try and line it up nicely though. tell us where the hole is that's through and look what I should do I think is just put a um, grub screw or a, a bolt here instead of tapping the back here um, just put a bolt in and we might even just put a groove on the on the cylinder so it's a bit of mucking around so each each new adapter we'd like to put on the press well we can then just put a thread in it and, and pop it onto the flat there so we'll give that a go I think Right, we've tapped a thread in here, 5 8, oh sorry, 5 16 UNC. I have a little bolt here. What the idea is, is just to get it so, so it's nice and straight. When I lift the, or when I take the press down, We'll bring it up, this collar will come with us. It's still free enough that it bottoms out inside here, yet there's still a little bit of slop so it can self align. There you go. That's our plate made, our boss for the press made. By doing the boss like this, if we'd like to put another sort of adapter onto the hydraulic cylinder here on the press, we can, we have the option. It's just a matter of make something that stays up there. There's the hole there, so just goes up and self aligns. And that's it. So, so look, thanks for following along with this one. Um, this is the end of the part two. And what we'll actually do now, well, well this will be the end of the TE20 axle puller videos. But um, coming up pretty soon to try it out, we're going to um, get a kit for this axle. We'll tidy this up, this axle's a mess. Um, we'll sandblast the axle up, tidy it up nicely, um, put a new bearing and seal. We'll go through the exercise for people that have a little Fergie of some kind. Um, the, this will now fit a TE20, you know, TEA, TED, T20, 
TEF, which is the diesel. It'll fit the FE35s, which is the, the four-cylinder petrol and the four-cylinder diesel, 35 Fergie. Um, it'll fit the MF35, the Massey Fergusons, with the um, either the petrol engine or the three-cylinder Perkins engine in them. And then it'll go right up and it'll fit the 135, 148. And I'm not sure how much further it will go for that, but I think 148 will probably be the limit. But um, look, thanks for sticking along and um, watching the whole show with us. Um, it's been a great little exercise. I felt like a bit of machining, so I've certainly got that out of my system. And yeah, thanks for watching. We'll catch up with you later, eh?